All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today you join me as I go to pick up a pick up a penguin, pick up a Peugeot 107 that I've agreed to buy for just five hundred pounds. They're great little cars, these. Ignore the badge, it's exactly the same as a Citroen C1 or a Toyota Igo. They're cheap to run, cheap to tax, cheap to insure. They're perfect first cars. They all use the same one litre engine from Daihatsu and it is bulletproof. You really can't go wrong with them. I've had dozens of these, and I'm not exaggerating either, dozens of these over the years, and I've never, ever had any engine issues. There are lots of other little issues with them, but nothing serious. I always try and buy them and keep a couple in stock because they hardly take up any room on the forecourt and there's always somebody looking for a first car. This particular one that we're going for now, which I've agreed to buy for just 500 quid, is a 2006, so it's a few years older than I would have ideally liked, but it's only done 60,000 miles. It belongs to a friend of a friend and it's been described to me as being quite tidy, so I'm quite hopeful. Now here's where it gets interesting. I know I always preach to you that you should do a vehicle check before you hand over any money to buy a used car, but I thought this, it's a friend of a friend, it's 500 quid, should I bother, does it really matter? So I wasn't going to do one of these checks, and then I thought, hang on a minute, I better had, I don't know, otherwise I'm just a complete hypocrite. And I'm glad I did, because look at this. I use Car Vertical as always, so it's dead easy to use. Just go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg, which is Yankee Echo 56 Alpha Alpha Foxtrot. By the way, if you click the link below in the video description, and use the promo code HIP, you'll get 10% off each and every vehicle check that you do. Anyway, let's look at the report on this little 107. It's actually been written off. It's a category N write-off. So back in 2018, it was written off as a non-structural write-off. Now with a 12-year-old at the time, Peugeot 107, it probably won't have been worth an awful lot. This was pre-COVID, so it's probably a two and a half grand car. So it won't have taken an awful lot to write this off. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's been on its roof or anything serious like that, but it might have had a whacked bumper or a whacked wing or, you know, that sort of thing. The way that insurance companies assess damage isn't the way you or I would assess damage. So the slightest thing would write something like this off. The seller never volunteered this information to me. Chances are they probably didn't even know themselves. But what I'm going to try and do is use this as a bargaining tool to get it slightly cheaper. I hate doing this, but business is business at the end of the day. And if I can use this to get an extra £100 off the price, then I'm definitely on the right side of it. I also spotted on the car vertical report that it's got a very long MOT until this time next year. But look how many advisory items there are. I can't remember the last time. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen as many advisory items. The MOT test has probably got repetitive strain injury after all that. Rusty this, worn that, weeping the other. Anyway, let's go and have a look, shall we? <laughs> right, well, here she is. I've just been and stopped and put some fuel in, and £10 has bought me half a tank of fuel. It's what I'm talking about. They're so cheap to run, these cars. It was flashing as well when I picked it up. But so far, I'm quite impressed with it. It's quite clean and tidy, it drives very well. I've got a rev counter, no air conditioning. But I do have central locking. Fully loaded, isn't it? Listen to a purr. There is a bit of body damage on the near side sill, which I'll show you in a second. In fact, in a minute, I'll park up and I'll give you a tour of it. In case you were wondering, I did manage to get this for less than the 500 pounds. I explained that it was a cat N, an insurance write-off, and just as I thought, the previous owner had no knowledge of it. That could be true or not, I'm not sure. They said they bought it about 12 months ago off Facebook Marketplace and didn't bother doing one of these checks, so I suppose it's quite a plausible story. Anyway, I got this little 107 Urban for just £400. Such a cheap car, that. I know it's got a list of advisories as long as my arm, and it is on the hit list, but still, £400 is cheap. As I said at the start, I wasn't planning to retail this. I thought I'd just move it on within the trade and maybe get two or three hundred pounds profit on it. But I've had a slight change of heart. It's not a bad little car. And I'm sure it would do somebody. So what I think I'm going to do is take this to the car wash, get them to give it a wash and a vacuum, and then advertise it at 995. You can't buy anything these days for a grand, can you? And somebody's going to get a little cheap-to-run, cheap-to-tax car with 12 months MOT. Happy days. The great little cars, these. In many ways, they remind me of the original Mini. Just a no-nonsense little runaround. Cheap to run, cheap to repair. It's one step up from getting the bus. What more could you want? I've had loads of these over the years, and I've noticed one thing. Most people, because these are generally people's first cars, they don't understand how frequently you should service something or how you should look after something. So most don't. 
quite frequently I'll take one of these in part exchange and it hasn't had fresh oil in five years and yet it still runs like a Swiss watch. I can't think of another car that'll do that. It goes back to my theory that if you want something reliable then you've got to keep it simple and you can't get more simple than this. Also although it's quite a small car you get plenty of space. I'm not cramped up in here at all. The other good thing about this particular model is that it's a five door so it's just that little bit more practical. Right then, let me show you around it. So we've done 63,609 miles. I've got a rev counter, which I think was an optional extra. The other good thing about this era of iGo C1107 is that you get an auxiliary port, so you can play with your sick beats. I've got electric windows. It's quite a tidy car, really. Someone's put some aftermarket wheel trims on it. On the front, we're rolling on a Minerva with about five mil of tread. Excuse the wind noise, it's very windy today. But it looks very tidy, actually. Even the headlamps aren't all cloudy. Around this side, we've got a, not a Minerva, actually. That is on about four mil of tread. Yeah, you see the damaged sill down there? Bit of a pity, really, but 400 pounds, what can you uh, expect? A little bit of corrosion down there. On this side, we've got an Avon on about four mil of tread. Bit of key damage there. I would say this is at a rear end whack because I've just spotted. See where the paint's flaking. So I'd say that that part here, the rear bumper, is definitely being painted. We've got matching reg plates though from Tom's Motors in Oldham. And then round this side we've got a, have we got, oh yeah, we've got an Exxon. So we've got four odd tyres, but they're all on plenty of tread. You can actually see where the, the lacquer starting to lift as well. There's nothing to these cars at all. We've even got the parcel shelf, now that's always missing. What have we got in here? We've got one flip-flop. I think the previous owner was Heather Mills. What's this? Any service history? Uh, someone's exam paper there. A levels or something, no doubt. If we look under here. Hmm, it's all all right, really. A little bit of damp there. That's one common issue on here, but that feels dry. Usually they leak water in either the rubber seal here or that stoplight, the centre stoplight. So most people just bung them up with silicon to stop them leaking. But it's all quite clean, isn't it? Once I've given this a, and you've got Isofix seats, once I've given this a quick vacuum and wash, quite a presentable car. Someone actually has had this issue before with leaking because they've put silicon around here. Right, let's have a look under the bonnet. That's another common issue. Those handles always snap, but that one's fine. The other common issue with these is the indicator stalk. That sometimes fails. In fact, I've got a spare one on my desk, actually. I accidentally ordered two the other day. Someone as well has had a spillage with some red paint. That's either nail varnish or it's touch-up paint for this car. Obviously not very neat. But we've got two cup holders, a glove compartment, I guess. Electric windows on both sides. As first cars go, it isn't bad, is it? So that is a little bulletproof one litre Daihatsu engine. They're chain driven and they just don't go wrong at all. Got a fairly modern Halfords battery there. Yeah, I can't see any evidence up front where it's had a bump. So I'm fairly certain someone's run into the back of it. This all looks quite original. Yeah, not bad is it? So I think what I'll do is take it for a quick wash and I'll show you the pictures once it's all been cleaned. Right, see you in half an hour. Cheers guys.
Oh yes. Belt. Mustn't forget my belt. Well, I've just picked it up from the car wash and spent 15 pounds on a wash and vacuum. You might call me lazy, but I fly here, there and everywhere. So those 30 minutes are precious, trust me. It wasn't particularly bad before, but it has cleaned up really well. It's a really tidy car, this. I know a lot of people can't be bothered with the hassle, but had the previous owner just put this on Facebook Marketplace themselves at 995, it would have sold and they'd have got five or 600 pounds more for it. Anyway, their loss will hopefully be my gain because that's exactly what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to stick it on the website, parts exchange to clear, 995, and I guarantee it'll be sold this time tomorrow. It's annoying, but it just will. I know it will. I've got some really nice cars in stock at the moment and it's quite quiet. The phone just isn't ringing. It's frustrating because anything under £3,000 sells straight away. I feel like banging my head against a wall sometimes, but I've got to make profit. So if there's five or six hundred pounds profit in this, who cares really? So I'm heading back to work now where I shall photograph it and write a quick advert. And as always with this kind of stuff, I shall be as blunt as possible without being rude. Firm but fair. I always get lots of messages from people who want to get into buying and selling cars. And they always say, well, I can't seem to find a car at the right price. Where do I start? You need to start with this sort of stuff. Keep scouring Facebook Marketplace, eBay, the post office window, all the usual places. I promise you, you will find little gems like this occasionally. And really, depending on the price, if it's just cheaper and stuff like this, it doesn't really matter if it's had a dozen owners and got no history. People at this end of the market still need transport. So if there's a few hundred pounds in it, what does it matter? You've got to start somewhere. So this kind of thing, the iGo, the C1, the 107, is an ideal starting place. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. Make sure you check out Raffle Shack. I've currently got a 2018 VW Transporter camper van, which you could win for just five pounds. There's about three weeks left, so plenty of time left and plenty of tickets left. So check it out if you're interested. Right, on that note, see you later. Catch you next time.